All right, good Monday morning, a busy Monday morning it is with Hamas' surprise attack on Israel. And Richard Haik, he's the spokesman for the Israeli Defense Force, uh, has the plan. Yes, um, Hamas have been in control in the Gaza Strip for 15 years or more. We do not have to supply them electricity. They have their own electricity. They have their generators. We are now going after Hamas targets. Cynically, they have entrenched themselves within civilians. We are now messaging, actually, certain areas in Gaza to evict uh, from certain locations where we know there's Hamas mm -hmm. infrastructure targets and centers. That's ongoing. But we're fighting. We're still fighting. Yes. So this is, this is, this is, a, this is a big question, uh, and uh, this is something that we'll have to figure out how to be disruptive in our action. I, I will say, and this has been said by our leadership to the Hamas, uh, these are not soldiers that they've taken. They've taken grandmothers, children, young girls. I've seen, I've seen gruesome and barbaric things on their social medias of uh, driving them in the streets and showcasing these young girls. If they touch a hair on their head, we will get to every one of them. Mm. This is something we have not experienced before, an unprecedented attack. With more on this, let's please welcome to the program the Council General of Israel to the Midwest, Inam Cohen. Mr. Cohen, good morning. Good morning. So what, um, we, we learned yesterday that you know some of the people who are being held hostage is an elderly woman in a wheelchair who actually is a Holocaust survivor. Can you tell me wow. about her story? Yeah, you know what? Story. Out of 700 uh, stories of Israelis that have been murdered, I would say massacred by Hamas and J Islamic Jihad terrorists. And apparently around 100 Israelis were, as you mentioned, abducted to the Gaza Strip. Um, many of them um, are elderly people, this old woman of 86 years, Holocaust survivors a survivor, together with uh, many children who were torn apart from their mothers and now being held as hostages by Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And now we're, uh, rockets, we know that 5,000 plus rockets were fired, but we're hearing reports that rockets were also fired from Lebanon by Hamas fighters. Is that true? There has been some firing from Lebanon, too, and I think that Israel has been very clear, and President Biden has been very clear in warning Hezbollah and other Iran-inspired radical forces in the region not to think of, you know, joining this operation. So the Pentagon is moving U.S. forces closer to Israel. There's aircraft carrier strike group that's on the way. Are they there to get Americans out, or will they be drawn into the conflict? No, we don't have any expectations that they will be drawn into the conflict. I think it sends a very strong message that America and the free democratic world is behind Israel um, after these atrocities have happened, unprecedented massacre of 700 Israeli civilians in the south of our country. But how did this happen? I mean, the Israeli army is so sophisticated. This just seems like it was a well-planned attack. And I mean, the, the fact that they were firing missiles on people on power glides were coming down. How long do you think that they've been planning this? It seems like an operation that was well planned for quite a long time, and you're asking a very important question. We will definitely have to investigate how that happened with us, uh, us having enough intelligence on that. But right now I have to say that we're focused on two things. The first one is making sure that our territory is clear of any remaining Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists. During the night there was still uh, some uh, fighting in some Israeli communities in the south. The first priority is to make sure that our communities, our country, our citizens are safe, wherever they are. And then would come the second priority, and it might start soon, and that would be probably a large-scale operation against the infrastructure of Hamas and Islamic Jihad to eradicate this threat, because no sovereign state, no country in the world could permit that its citizens would be slaughtered in their houses or while partying in the woods. The, you know, the stories that are starting to come out are horrifying. We're talking about barbaric, inhuman atrocities that these terrorists conducted in children, in mothers, elderly people, whole families that were killed. Um, it, is, it, is, it is really horrifying. But do you think Iran had an operational role in this attack? 
we don't have the full information yet. Um, but it is what we do know is that Iran has been insp- inspiring Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and other radical forces in the region for many years. They have su- uh, supplied weapons, um, know-how, and and more than anything, a radical radical ideology that inspired these organizations um, against Israel. And this is something we have to remember that while we fight Hamas and Islamic Jihad, the major major threat, not only to Israel, not only to the Middle East, but also to global stability, look at Ukraine, for example, is Iran. Yeah. You know, General Counsel, when you look at the sophistication of this, where were they training at? Was it Iran? Was it uh, Syria? Where could they have uh, trained the way they came in from the south, paragliding, and, and, and the onslaught, I believe, I don't know if there was drones dropping bombs or something dropping bombs from up top. Where, where, where was the location that they trained for this? This is a good question. We will have to investigate that. I cannot refer to this specific operation, but we do know, and we've seen it for years, that uh, some countries in a region, and against Iran is the top of them, are partnering, are inspiring, and are also... Um, um, you know, helping the terrorist organizations around around us to prepare for the fight against Israel. So I won't be surprised at all when we learn that um, the plans for these operations also occurred not only in the Gaza Strip, but also in other countries around us that belong to the to the, I would say, to the axis of evil in the Middle East. Yeah, H- has there been any um, as as far as the the hostages are? I, I know there were eleven hundred plus killed. How many hostages are there? And have we, have, have you guys, your government, gotten back any of those hostages thus far? According to estimations, there are around 100 uh, hostages held by Hamas today. Um, the, the estimation is that within 48 hours, we'll be able to get the full information, first share it with the families, and then we will definitely have to think how we handle this situation. Is that the number one priority right now is to get the hostages out and to make sure that there's no Palestinian terrorists in Israel? That's true. That's correct. As I said, during the night, there were still some fightings in some of our southern communities um, with Palestinian terrorists. And the top priority is to make sure that our territory, our communities are safe. Did Hamas do this because of the pending deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia? You know what? It's very tempting to uh, try to analyze that in rational, um, you know, uh, rational logic. But we have to remember that in the end of the day, what lays there is ideology, radical Islamic ideology that does not accept the existence of Israel, of Israel being where it is, the Jewish and democratic state, the homeland of the Jewish people. And that is what lays and, and, you know, behind the ideology of Hamas, behind the ide- ideology of the Islamic Jihad, and behind what they try to do to Israel. Yeah. Can we get some more details about the uh, Israeli music festival? I mean, it was out in the desert. It was similar to our Burning Man that we have out, you know, right. uh, outside of Las Vegas. Um, 260 people found at that site. I, I just, it sounded like and they were allowed. How, how did they infiltrate that music festival. According to the stories that are coming out now, apparently vehicles of terrorists arrived to the area of this festival. At least dozens, at least dozens, if not more, of uh, Hamas terrorists. They were surrounding the people and just started to shoot. Uh, we know at least of 200, uh, 260 people who were killed during this this festival. The horrible, horrible stories that I will spare you about the brutalization of the bodies, bodies afterwards. Yeah. Um, it was a, it, it was a devastating, devastating uh, atrocities. I don't have any other words. Sorry. I, I know we saw the picture. It was awful. And yeah. The people, girls, were being raped next to dead bodies. It's just, it is just gut wrenching. Yeah. But other places in Israel. I, so this obviously was a well-planned, well-coordinated attack. Did all of it happen at around 7 a.m. Saturday morning? That's correct. It started around 6.30 a.m. in the morning in Israel, while here in Chicago it was the night between 
Saturday, um, Friday and Saturday. Wow. And then did how, how are all these civilians killed? I mean, just they went into certain neighborhoods or what, what town did they attack? Because I did see that a police station was just destroyed in southern Israel. That's true. They entered uh, Israeli towns and more than 20 Israeli smaller community, kibbutzim, uh, communal communities in the south of Israel, going from one house to another, um, trying to infiltrate the houses, capturing the families, shooting at them, killing children in front of their parents, mothers in front of their kids, um, setting their houses on fire, taking some, you know, family members as captives, hostages to the Gaza Strip. This reminds us very bad stories from our history. And this is something that we, it will take us time to, to recover. But again, our first priority is just to make sure that our southern part of the country is safe right now. Were any, and I know this is early on and it's a fluid situation, but were any Israeli family members able to fight back? Were they armed themselves Absolutely. so they could kill these Hamas people? Absolutely. Absolutely. There were, we're hearing a lot of, you know, stories of heroism about, you know, um, mem- family members protecting their families, um, you know, using their own guns. It took some time until the IDF, the ar- army and, and police forces arrived to each community. We're hearing stories about heroes that just heard the stories and came out from, you know, northern uh, towns just to really help joining the fighting and help, help you know, saving uh, people's lives. So there were a lot of fighting, a lot of heroism, alongside with the devastating uh, results of the casualties. Yeah. Will this will this war that's been launched onto Israel have any effect on the Abraham Accords? I hope not, because I think that our partners to the Abraham Accords, the moderate Arab countries in the Middle East, do understand the enemy that we're facing. It's not an enemy that just hates Israel, and and I'm talking about Iran and its uh, proxies. But it is also an enemy that hates any moderacy. So they're not just fighting Israel, but also any Arab country, uh, any moderate Arab country in the Middle East. Yeah. How many Hamas, terror, Hamas Hezbollah, uh, uh, Islamic Jihad, how many of them have been arrested and will they be tried for war crimes? Um, many of them got killed during the fighting. Many of them. We're talking about hundreds. Some are now being held by, you know, Israeli authorities being investigated just to understand, you know, the situation right now. And they will definitely be held, uh, being held accountable for war crimes. Is there anything you need from us, from Americans or from our government right now? Thank you for that. We, I, I, I have to share with you that while we're outraged and appalled and saddened by, by the atrocities in Israel, it really warms our heart to see the strong, unwavering American support, starting with President Biden, Governor Pritzker, and thousands of American citizens, community members, who call us and ask us what we can do. We want to support Israel. So there are designated channels to support Israelis today by medical support, by donations, um, even the public support. There are some rallies planned in Chicago land and in many other cities across the Midwest to support Israel in the coming days. So this is something that means a lot to us. Okay. All right. I well, support you. Thank you so much, Council General of Israel to the Midwest. And we will have you back time. on. And thank you, and, and God bless you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. What if you could build a six-figure retirement income with almost half the money saved? You heard that right. Get a discount on your retirement, creating a six-figure income with 40% less than traditional 401ks and mutual funds. Hi, I'm Mitch Lyons, best-selling author and executive producer of a new Hollywood documentary called The Baby Boomer Dilemma. In this film, economists and Nobel Prize-winning PhDs share a strange concept I call the retirement discount. It gives you more retirement income with the same dollar saved, and your money is never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even people who are on track have shifted money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you are over 50 and want a bigger, better retirement with less money, call to get a free copy of this brand new movie, 1-800-578-3535. This is a $30 value, but when you call today, you get it completely.